we had an elk on the property that was causing a lot of damage and we just knocked him down he's still standing behind us he just woke waking up he's kind of groggy or everything watch the video kind of see what we do to get him back into a uh, into a soft release pen so he can uh, grow out and quit causing so much damage around my house I think his weight is, Donald. He's big. Do I get to kick him real quick? You big fat son of a... You are on beef. Oh, boy, that's a big old elk. That's the biggest elk I've ever seen in my life. I don't know how big he is. How much money has he cost you in damage? He has cost me way more than he's worth in damages. He has destroyed my gazebo at my house, my yard, it looks like a garden. I could plant anything I want because him and the dogs have fought for so many nights. Just It looks like a tiller's been in my yard. He tore up every birdhouse I've got, every bird feeder I've got, every deer feeder I've got. He's bored. We, uh, he's the only elk left we got on at the ranch, and uh, he's bored. He's, he's playing with my dogs every night. He's just a pain. So we decided to put him in a pen. I don't know how this is going to work, but it's a soft release. It's pen. a big soft release release pen, so it's about 40 acres. But uh, that way we can keep him away from the house, keep him away from the feeders. We can start feeding out in the preserve again, and he won't tear anything up. Nick's getting him some warmer. Uh, what else are you going to give him, Nick? Probably the pre A little bit of an antibiotic. He finally lost his um, his horns uh, when Nick was trying to load him in the tractor. So that's what all the blood is. He shed these horns. So this is his, we cut him earlier in the year. He had gotten some flies and stuff in, in his horns. So we cut his horns off. And um, so this is his buttons. So might get to make me a belt buckle or something out of that. So, but, uh, so he has been a pain. Um, we're glad to have him in the pen where he's not tearing up Angie's yard. She's glad to have him in the pen. He'll get all the food he wants and grow out a good set of horns in here and uh, we'll put him back out in the preserve when we get some more elk. So, uh, and maybe he'll leave us alone. All the blood is normal, guys. Um, I mean, whenever they shed, they they drop it and they bleed a little bit. It'll scab up and itch on him a little bit, but he'll it'll scab up and um, start growing horns. I mean, within a couple of weeks, he'll start putting buttons on and growing horns again. Man, I wish you'd wait. I bet that weighs a pound right there. Mm -hmm. Just that little bitty bit. Crazy. Got two pounds. Feel like a four pound bass to me. <laughs> That's crazy. I can't believe how heavy those are. <laughs> he smells like an elk, doesn't he? He looks like he's in good shape. Nick will check him, make sure he looks good. He's got a few ticks on him. Uh, that Ivo Mac will kill all those ticks. It'll, it'll just make him healthier. Uh, worming him, everything. His foot, feet look good. Whoever kills this guy next year, I owe you. Because I'm ready to get him off of this ranch. I cannot believe how big a body just is. I mean, look at the body on this thing. He's huge. Stick. I'm gonna give him some prevail or banamine. So you just mainly the biggest thing is is with them getting a little worked up and being darted like this, uh, just to help with the stiffness and soreness from it. So I just pulled his tongue out of his mouth that way he doesn't get that tongue back in there and cut off his airways or or anything like that. So, want them to breathe really good. Normally we'd put them in the shade, but it's pretty chilly today, and I, I don't expect him to be on the ground much longer. So, no, we're getting ready to wake him up here. Yeah, wake him back up. His eyes are moving. He's looking. Gotta lead Nick. So you might get a hug over this. Getting him out of the out of my yard. Well, I figured Angie'd hug me and nothing else. If she was here, she would. <laughs>
It's pretty um, cool having him in my yard and having him, you know, coming to the ponds every night and watching him and everything. But whenever they start getting bored and getting destructive, it's uh, it was time for him to go. Nick's going to try to find a vein to, to give the reversal. He'll, he'll reverse him out of the, uh, uh, the tranquilization off, but... Um, we find we we like giving it in the veins. They wake up faster. They're um, as long as you give it slow and don't just really push it in that vein real fast. It'll it'll wake them up up a lot faster. They'll have a better recovery, um, and they just do a whole lot better doing it that way. Got it. Got a few kicks on it. Wish I had some. They do wake up really fast when you do it this way, so we like to try to have everything undone for the kids and they can see the mask and everything all done, get them all the parts back away. Because as you can see, he'll be on his feet in seconds. He's probably going to be cranky. already breathing heavier you can tell it you can tell you can see this breathing sticking back up good yeah should be. he's already blinking his eyes go that way go that way go that way You could probably make it. Go that way with it. Go you could probably way. make it. Just go that way. Go right along the fence line. Just take it easy until you get to the fence line. That is a success right there. Or an animal of what, a thousand acres? Just, just, and to find them is a very risky challenge. I don't care if they are a thousand pound animal. What you got to worry is if once you get a dart at him, if he goes, if he runs out of sight and gets laid and lays down, you might not ever find him. So we uh, we had four of us plus the dogs were handy. If we did need to put them on the track to find him, we could have. But uh, it's really risky darting one in a, in a big area like this, and uh, they'll go lay down and and you'll never see them again. They'll they'll never never wake back up out of it. Or go in a pond. We were really worried about him going in the pond and and go passing out. So I'd already cleaned everything out of my pockets to where I was fixing to jump in the water. Good thing about using these new capture glut or drugs is you can see his ears and everything. He's really alert. Um, the old in the old days man we'd have to knock them down and they just sometimes it'd take them days to come out of it totally so this new stuff right now if i walked up to him he could take off running he'd be just almost back to full speed so okay guys um we just knocked the delt down hope y'all enjoyed the video i just thought i'd close out this and, and show you a little bit of the damage that you can see the gazebo back he's knocked all the spindles out of it and they're still laying on the ground. We picked the table up, a glass table in there, and he just shattered it everywhere. The chairs were all bent up. I mean, I could show you the birdhouses over there. I could show you everything, but it's just, um, <laughs> he's done a, he's got a number on our yard. So, but uh, like I said, I'm glad he's there. Uh, more peace to him. I hope he enjoys his solitarity. So he's in solitary confinement for a while now. Hey guys, if you guys want to see what else is going on around the ranch, um, check out these videos up here. And if you want to check out some of our other favorite videos, check out these up here. And don't forget to press this button right down here, which is our subscribe button.